Welcome to My Autism Tribe, a community of advocates that are linked by autism, but bound by strength. This is a time to find our sounding board and shoulders that help us carry life's load without the fear of criticism. We give and receive. We nurture and empower. I'm your host, Susan Scott. In the 1950s, manners were taught to all children. And because of the structured ways that manners were taught and the expectation that everyone would learn them, it helped many children who were socially awkward to adapt. I want to read you a quote from our beloved Temple Grandin. She says, It is acceptable to be eccentric, but being rude, unkind, or not knowing how to interact with others at the very basic level of please, thank you, or excuse me is never acceptable. Manners help people exist together and get along with each other. They'll open doors that will give you a chance to express yourself, be yourself, and achieve your goals and dreams. I know from experience that this is possible. Just keep learning and trying. What a great quote. Um, Today's guest is Robin Hammond. She's the owner of Southern Hospitality in Kentucky. She specializes in teaching children and adults through etiquette classes how to become confident, self-assured, and influential leaders in the community. Robin has also recently became an official autism-friendly certified business. Please join me in a warm welcome. Hey, Robin. Thanks so much for joining us today. And we're really excited to hear about your business, Southern Hospitality in Kentucky, and really why you started it. Can you share a little bit about your story? Sure. Well, first of all, let me say hello to you, Susan, and thank you for having me. Um, I am from Lexington, Kentucky, and I was raised by a bunch of old Southern women with very old Southern roots, and um, it was just kind of who we were and Mm -hmm. what was instilled upon us that we had good manners, good etiquette, and that really my grandmother's big thing was that we would be able to sit down at a dinner table and not embarrass ourselves. Um, <laughs> that's a good so thing. I really, yeah, right. I, I really thought that that's how all children were raised. And um, as I grew up and I had my own children, um, I have three kiddos, I really started seeing a difference with my youngest daughter and the lack of basic manners and etiquette and that's really kind of what threw me into this and just really wanted to share with um, children and adults to kind of get back to that basics of manners and etiquette. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, Definitely. I was actually having a a conversation with a friend not too long ago. We were talking about manners and etiquette and and how much it's really kind of evolved from the 1950s you know some of the things that you know we're doing um, now are are different you know kind of protocols I guess from the 1950s but there are still some of the same things that I believe remain consistent and that is you know you should always say please and thank you you're welcome excuse me Um, things like that you know and that is something that I feel like is missing just across the whole you know general population absolutely and you know I really I'll tell you um, Susan so my oldest child is 30 and then I have a 24 year old and then a 17 and the reason I bring up their ages is just because of that exact example Um, when Drew was growing up in middle school they may have had cell phones he didn't have a cell phone Mm -hmm. but now you know they're like born with cell phones so really that's when I really started seeing a huge difference and um, I think that we've become a society that is very relaxed and I you know just seeing my daughter's friends will come into the house and they'll be on their cell phones and instead of looking up and taking the time to say you know hello Mrs. Hammond they keep looking at their phone and they're like, hey, it's just a very different society. <laughs> yeah. I, I do. I think that we've become very relaxed, especially from, from the 1950s. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Mm-hmm. Well, and I it's yeah. it's been something that's important to me because I was raised very similar to you in that we had table manners, we had social manners if we were out and about and we ran into someone that we knew, you know, there were certain social protocols that, you know, we had set in place and those were considered to be rules, you know, they weren't 
oh, right. if you feel like it. You know, these were things <laughs> that you did. And exactly. so an, another thing that has a, that I've really tried to work on uh, with my son, Alex, who's five and he's a boy. So <laughs> it, we've got that whole thing. You know, he's a five-year-old boy. So how in the world am I going to teach him manners? And I know that since you recently became an autism-friendly certified business, which I'm so super excited about, um, because yeah, it's you know it's something that I feel like is important. I remember even when Alex was completely nonverbal, and we were working with signs for him. One of the first signs that I wanted to teach him was "thank you," <laughs> and right, um, right. you know, so they were like, "Oh, okay, well, you can teach him to sign milk or." cookie Mm -hmm. or things like that and those were all you know great but um thank you was one of the the first signs that I wanted him to be able to 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 speak to use and um it's always been very important to me that I model that behavior for him so when I'm asking him will you put on your shoes please if he gives me something or if he does something that he's supposed to do, I say thank you. And those are things that I want to instill in him. And he, he is, he's learning. He will, he will say, he'll say bless you when I sneeze and stuff. And I think it's just really cute. But one of the things that, and I mentioned in a quote before you came on from Temple Grandin is that we can learn manners and it may not be easy but as long as we just keep trying to instill these manners and I know that you have um, several students that will be starting with you that are on the spectrum and can you share a little bit about how you're going to be working with them and things like that sure yeah absolutely so uh, you know this is our first season and it was really interesting I, as we talked in our first meeting I had three mothers um, approach me and um, and they are on the spectrum their children are and so one thing it was really important which initially when I reached out to you I really wanted to understand and be able to not only welcome um, them but to do right by them so I want them to feel welcome in into the group and you know, what do I need to do to support them? Well, and, that, and so, that's a good point. If I can just stop you right there, I do want to let sure. everybody know, because there there are guests that I reach out to and say, would you be interested in being a guest? Um, however, you reached out to me, not to be a podcast guest. You reached out to me because you were wanting to inquire about what the best way to yeah. bring these and be inclusive to these children are and I you just have my utmost respect because not a lot of people do that you know really just want to learn more and ask questions you know how how can I do this how can I be the best at including these kiddos so thank you for doing that oh, well you don't need to thank me I, it, again it's Part of who I am is part of the program and the curriculum that we're teaching is that everyone should feel welcome, and I I want all of the kids to feel welcome regardless um, of their situation, but also to understand and learn that there are people who are different than we are in our community, and that's okay, and there are times that we need to learn how to make them feel welcome by being able to offer maybe a different support to them. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, so I was actually very honored. I'll just say when these parents approached me, that they trusted me to um, place their child in this class. And so the first thing I really wanted to do was a learn more about because I have never had a, a situation where I've dealt with an autistic uh, child, mm-hmm. and so I want to do what's right by them. So. Uh, so anyway, so I reached out to you and you gave me such great information and then connected me, obviously, with Speed and Louisville, and um, I'm so excited that we are um, an autism-friendly business uh, that's recognized now. That is like a huge thing for me. Sure. Um, but then we're going to, um, I'm going to meet with the families a, a couple weeks prior to the class 
just a, it's kind of a, I don't do this with all families, but I felt like it was really necessary that their child um, is introduced to me, like in a personal setting. Mm -hmm. And um, so they know who I am, I know who they are, and so that the parents can help and inform me what type of supports I can give to their uh, children. Sure. Um, So we are definitely going to do that. And we feel like if there's things that we need to have and incorporate into our program based on what the parents need, then we're going to do that. So if it's, you know, if we have to have some headphones or if there's little fidget spinners or whatever, we Mm -hmm. plan on incorporating those into our program to make them feel welcome um, and, and, and be able to participate. That's awesome. That's so, so cool. And the classes, what are some of the things that you are going to be focusing on? Well, we've got a pretty formal curriculum, uh, uh, Susan, but we want to make sure that the kids have a good time, too. So that's obviously, (laughs) we don't want the kids to go home after the first time meeting and say, I'm never going back. Yeah, they're bored. Right. (laughs) They're bored out of their mind. So, I mean, we're going to go through everything from first impressions about how to dress for occasions to being able to introduce people. What mm-hmm. happens when you're invited to a party? What does that look like? And what do you need to do as a guest, you know, in order yeah. to respect your hostess? Um, and then we're also going to go over grooming and hygiene, uh, being the best guest. And we're also going to have two socials um, throughout the year. And so mm-hmm. it allows the kids to kind of learn how to go through a receiving line, um, you know, learn how to offer someone a cookie or a beverage, and then how also to accept that. Um, and then we'll kind of tie it up with, you know, handwritten thank yous. And, of course, we'll go over some table and dining etiquette as well. Um, but one of the really fun and exciting things I'm so excited about in November, we will be doing a thoughtful act of kindness section. Um, oh, cool. That allows us to understand that there's people in need in our community. And I really want these kids to understand that because I feel like all of us could use a little boost in that arena. And um, yeah. so we are going to uh, partner up with Arbor Youth of Kentucky, which is a um, nonprofit organization here locally that houses homeless children. Oh, and so wow. we're going to do a supply drive. So the kids will gather supplies and, you know, we'll have a contest of who got, got the most. We'll have some fun things because, as we all know, everybody can be motivated with rewards. <laughs> so, right. It helps. Uh, and then in December at our social, we'll have a big, um, we'll, we'll all share what we learned about that as well as uh, be able to actually donate those goods. So oh, wow. I'm really excited about that. I think they'll really get into that. And I hope so. Yeah. And especially from the, it deals with other children, some right. that are most unfortunate than they are. And so I think that's amazing. Something, as far as the ages, <clears throat> mm-hmm. excuse me, as far as the ages that you will work with, or what's been your experience as far as teaching manners you know some of the manners it's like okay you know I'm working with Alex on holding a Mm -hmm. fork you know this and this is part of his occupational therapy as well so Mm -hmm. taking that into consideration but what are the ages where you can really kind of start honing in I guess depending on the child's um, capabilities of course what what do you see that as being well I think Susan you brought a great point up earlier when when you were talking about when Alex was nonverbal and teaching him those basic thank you, please. So Mm -hmm. I have twin granddaughters who are a year and a half old and we have learned sign and those are part of our sign is please and thank you. So I think that as soon as a child can hold something, that's when you should start teaching manners. Yeah. It's pretty young. But I do think that as, you know, it just instills those values at an early age and it makes they may stray a little bit but they'll come back to that eventually I can remember thinking on Sunday nights we would have these dinners and we had to sit straight and use all of our silverware and it was the longest hour of my life (laughs) (laughs) and I did not appreciate it and I probably did not use that 
as I became a teenager, except when I would find myself out somewhere, Mm -hmm. those, you know, those values would come back, those skill sets would come back, and uh, now, as an adult, of course, man, do I appreciate the fact that I had these women who valued those skill sets. Yeah. So, I think as soon as, as soon as you can start teaching them, the better off. Yeah, and again, uh, modeling, you know, for them, if, you know, right. we should say please and thank you as well. Absolutely. And dinner time, breakfast time, lunch time can sometimes be really mm-hmm. challenging anyway um, mm-hmm. for any parent. Um, and especially if you have a child that's on the spectrum, because a lot of times there's a lot of challenges with sensory intake, you know, your the um most of the time you're fixing another different dinner for they for them and you know you're fixing a dinner for yourself because they won't eat what you're eating and uh they won't sit at the table and this is another thing that we've worked with in therapy as well and going back Mm -hmm. to your point about you know sunday dinners it's i think we've kind of strayed from the whole used to be every night family sat down you know for dinner we didn't have cell phones um you know or ipads or anything like that and now those are very much integrated into our day-to-day 24 hours a day seven days a week lifestyle and and so it maybe and i'm kind of thinking out loud here but if we let's say had just that one day that one night where it's like okay we are gonna all sit at the table you know Uh no one has soccer practice or therapy or we don't have church or whatever it may be find that one night where it's like okay that's the night when the family tries at least tries to sit down at the table and yes maybe the child has an ipad in front of them because that will keep a meltdown from happening or or whatever but everyone is there is being included maybe it's that's something to start with absolutely and just asking questions around the table Mm -hmm. how was your day what did you do at school today what did you learn today and I think that what you'll find is that a they want to hear they want their voice heard yeah and b they'll start asking you those same questions so it really is also a way you know the dinner table is a way that people communicated I mean the dinner table back in the 50s was our social media right yeah, and, um, that's kind of where we all communicated, and I, I kind of tease all the time and say that, in my opinion, <laughs> the frozen TV dinner was the demise of our society. Yeah, I think that it really pushed us away from the table and uh, got us in front of the TV instead of each other. So I think that would be a wonderful way to start if you could just get that one day a week and uh, kind of make it a fun. Uh, you know, yeah. maybe fix their favorite foods that evening or, um, I don't know, play a game or something that uh, allows everybody to really kind of communicate and be together. Yeah. And however that looks like for your family. I mean, you have to know your child's learning style. and Exactly. Uh, exactly. And, you know, some kids aren't verbal and so they're not going to be able to ask questions or answer questions and things like that but I really do I I know that it's not that the child or you know even the adult with autism doesn't want to be a part of something they still very very much want to be a part of something and just to be included at the dinner table instead of being you know put in front of a tv or whatever um you know would be really good it's at least a start i know that temple grandin has made mention several times that you know her mother loved to have dinner parties and Mm -hmm. temple's job was to greet people at the door and that was i love that that too and you know it was and that that obviously made um very much of a positive impression on her because she speaks a lot on manners and how you know just because of the autism doesn't mean that you're any less 
or you're not to be held accountable for some of the things in life. Um, It's not an excuse, um, but that you can, you know, obtain these things. And exactly. Yeah. And everyone has their role. Everyone can have their role. And I, I think that as humans, it's our desire to be included and to be loved. And I think that that looks different for everyone, regardless of our needs. Um, but I definitely think that finding that role for mm-hmm. everyone is so beneficial and key. Yeah, I've even given, of course, I'm a single parent, so there's only two plates mm-hmm. to fill in in this <laughs> house, but I've even given Alex the plates, you know, to put on the table, and he gets this cheesy little confident grin when he does it. I yeah. mean, he's like, all right, I, I did something yeah. great, and I got some praise for exactly. it, and, um, you know, just being, again, a, a part of what's going on. But as far as teaching manners and things like that, I do want parents um, or the caregivers or whoever's listening to just to know that you have to gauge your child's capabilities, of course, and just because they may not be able to verbalize please or thank you or excuse me doesn't mean that we should stop modeling it. I think it's just a level of respect that we all have for each other, you know. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, because we all just want to get along with each other and need to get along. And, you know, so it's just something that you can work on with your child based on their capabilities and just push your child a little bit and see what they're capable of. You, They may surprise you. Right, right. Well, Robin, I have so appreciated uh, talking with you. And I know we met face to face Um, several weeks ago and I immediately fell in love with you because you have such a great heart and again kind of going back to the respect thing you the moment that you reached out and asked about how you could better serve the families that have enrolled in your classes with you know kiddos on the spectrum I just you you had me there and I can't thank you enough well, I can't thank you enough for just all of your wisdom and thoughts. And uh, we, again, I mean, it's important for me that everyone in this community is aware of each other. And um, again, that we all welcome each other. And it would be a much better place in the world if we all practice that a little bit more than just every day. Isn't that the truth? Awesome. <laughs> Well, you're great. Thanks so much for joining us today, and um, keep up the great work, Robin. Thank you so much, Susan, for having us. In many of her writings and face-to-face presentations, Temple Grandin repeatedly stresses one thing. Autism is not an excuse for bad behavior. In a great book with a foreword by Temple called Manners Matter, they give tips for teaching manners to children with autism. The top ones are, number one, model the good manners you're trying to teach your child. Number two, use video modeling and media as tools. Even animated characters can have good manners. Number three, define the manner in a way that is meaningful for the child. Explain to them that there are rules. Some kids don't care or understand the why it's important to others. And number four, consider using visuals and nonverbal prompts so the child can learn to use manners independently. All in all, No matter where we call home, the basic social manners of please, thank you, and excuse me are universal language. As Temple says, just keep learning and trying. Thanks so much for being a part of my autism tribe, and I'll see you next week.